Today, ladies and gentlemen, I am reacting to Isaiah Rivera's Instagram post where he asked the question, how strong do you need to be for a 50 inch vertical jump? Do you constantly need to get stronger and stronger to increase your vertical jump and jump higher and higher? Or is the advice on the other side of the coin where people say a 500 pounds half squat at very slow speeds isn't going to transfer because a vertical jump happens in 0.2 to 0.3 seconds. Where do I see all of this and who do I agree with? By the way, Isaiah Rivera is my favorite dunker. I went to college with John Evans, although we didn't really know each other. We would pass each other in the gym and say, hey bro, I am not going to let that bias me. If they're wrong, I'm going to say that they're wrong, or at least my opinion on all of this. But, oh, I forgot to eat my banana. Pause. Just worked out, got my protein shake, my banana. I forgot to eat my banana. Got to get your simple carbs directly after your workout. Anyways, let me stop yapping and let's take a deep dive into the video. Here we go. How strong do you have to be for a 50 inch vertical 305 pound power clean? Not gonna lie, that's strong as fuck. 475 pound half squat and then a 500 pound half squat, but he failed and he didn't get it. I'm not gonna lie. 475 pound half squat, that's a lot of weight. Let's take a look at the caption. That 500 pound half squat though, crying face three times. If you want to train like this and add inches to your vertical, click the link in my bio. So absolutely no context on how strong you actually have to be for a 50 inch vertical. However, I'm not mad at that because by not giving you much context, it forces all of you to ask questions in the comments, which increases engagement on their post. So ask your questions and they will probably answer it. But do I agree? How strong do you have to be for a 50 inch vertical? And the better question is, do you constantly need to increase your strength in your force production to jump higher and higher and higher? Because a vertical jump happens in 0.2 to 0.3 seconds. And just because you can produce a lot of force in a 500 pound squat doesn't mean or any heavy squat, just because you can produce a lot of force in general, doesn't mean that you can produce that force quickly. So where do I stand? This is what I will say. There is something out there called the dynamic strength index, and you can test on the dynamic strength index. You can also do a force velocity profile by using the my jump to app and what this does is you test your maximum strength you test your explosive strength and then it tells you where you have a deficit and it tells you you are deficient in explosive strength maybe you need more velocity based training maybe you need more plyometrics maybe you need more reactive strength and rate of force development training or maybe you're lacking in force and your maximum strength is not that high. So if you improved your force and your maximum strength, you would see gains on your vertical jump. I would like to point out three things. The first thing, and I'm just going to give you a quick breakdown because I've said this so many times that you're going to, you're all going to just roll your eyes when I say this, but there is an equation for power. There is an equation for force. I'll go through this quickly because I know you're all ripping your hair out right now. Power equals force times velocity. We could think of force as maximum strength. We could think of velocity as maximum speed. Increase your force, AKA your maximum strength. Increase your velocity, AKA your maximum speed. You will increase your power. And vertical jump is nothing more than a test of power. Take a look at the NFL combine when they do a vertical jump test. It's, a, it's raw power output. So if you want to increase your vertical jump, AKA your power output, then increase your maximum strength, AKA your force, and increase your, your, your velocity, and you will increase your vertical jump as much as possible. So that's number one. I want you to understand that. Does it make sense that you increase your maximum strength and you increase your force production, therefore increasing your vertical jump? Yes, 100%, that does make sense. Getting stronger and stronger and stronger, increasing your force production, your ability to produce force does make sense that you would continuously increase your vertical jump. I'm gonna leave that one there for a second and I'm gonna talk about the second thing. The second thing is that when you are a beginner, you can do anything to increase your vertical jump. You can go in the gym and you can do plyos and then you could do power, then you could do strength and then you could do hypertrophy and you will increase your vertical jump. When you get to be an advanced athlete, which I think we all can agree that Isaiah Rivera is very advanced. You need to be really focusing on both ends of the force velocity curve. 
So you really need to be focused on improving your force even more, which for Isaiah Rivera, that means going heavy as fuck. And then you need to be focused on the bottom of the curve, which is velocity-based training, which you often see Isaiah Rivera doing sprints and doing plyos and doing dunk sessions. He does a lot of jumps, a lot of dunk sessions. Obviously, he is a professional dunker. But we also saw him doing a power clean. So he's not neglecting the middle. He's not neglecting the power aspect of it. But what I will say is when you are advanced, you do need to start to focus on the very ends of the curve of the force velocity curve, maximum force production, um, which is just lifting heavy and then maximum velocity, which is, you know, your sprints, your jumps, the actual skill of dunking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, your plyos, your single leg hops, your bounding, what have you. So keep that in mind. As I talk about the rest of this video, you do need to focus when you're advanced on the very ends of the spectrum. When you're a beginner or an intermediate athlete, you could do a whole bunch of shit. You can look at a box and pretend you jumped on it and you will increase your vertical jump. Not really. The third thing that I want to talk about is that when you have someone who tests on the dynamic strength index, and let's say that they they have explosive strength through the roof, okay, their explosive strength is crazy, and they've maxed out their potential for explosive strength. The way that we get them more potential is by increasing their force production and by raising the roof on their ability to produce force, you actually get them a little bit more potential on their ability to potentially increase their explosive strength even more. So when you've maxed out your explosive strength, the way to get more potential on this so that you can take your explosive strength even higher is to increase your ability to produce force. And it makes sense because when you do a force velocity profile or you test on the, the dynamic strength index, we give you your deficits and they say that if you bring up your deficits, it helps you increase your vertical jump more. So if you're deficient in velocity or power, doing more of that type of training would likely increase your vertical jump. If you are deficient in your ability to produce force, then lifting heavier weights would be the thing that would help you increase your vertical jump more. So those are the three things that I want all of you to keep in mind when thinking about whether we need to constantly get stronger and stronger and stronger to increase your vertical jump. If you're already very strong, it's likely that you need to maintain that strength and maintain your ability to produce force and you need to go do more velocity-based training and more plyometrics. So do you need to constantly get stronger and stronger and stronger? Not if you're deficient in velocity-based training, not if you're lacking the ability to produce force quickly. But then let's say you focused on plyos and velocity-based training for a year. You went crazy on it, two years. And now your ability to produce force quickly, your explosive strength, your velocity, you've reached, you've capped out. Now you are going to need to go back and improve your strength, your ability to pr produce force more so that you get some more potential so that you have a little bit more wiggle room over here on the explosive strength side. So that is my answer. Do you need to constantly improve strength? Yes, unless you're one of these LA Fitness meatheads who's strong as fuck, but you can't jump over a jelly bean. Like this video if you like it, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to Isaiah Rivera and John Evans. They do put out a lot of great content, THP Strength, a uh, huge shout out. I do like their stuff. Um, and make sure that you get my programs. If you comment jump, J-U-M-P down below in the comment section, I will send you a free body weight vertical jump training program. And you can now get your first month free when signing up for any of my advanced training programs with weights. I will take you to the next level. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.